Well, hello there. It's Mrs. Avogard. Um, I'm going to take a second and talk over the Chapter 7 review. So exciting. We made it to the end. So <clears throat> the process for 1, 2, and 3 are the same. We are going to cross multiply. So we're going to go 3 times 7 to get 21 and 2 times x to get 2x. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2. And our answer is 10.5. So we're going to do that again. You guys are just going to love this process three times through. 9 times x is 9x. 9 times 1 is 9. 5 times 2x is 10x. Subtract 9x from both sides, and we get 9 equals, oops, <laughs> 1x is equal to 9. <laughs> I love it when you get interrupted in the middle of shenanigans. Um, so x is equal to 9. Um, one more time, just for fun, 2 times x plus 6 gives us 2x plus 12, and then x plus 1 times 4 gives us 4x plus 4. We subtract 2x from both sides to get 2x, and 4 from both sides to get 8. Divide both sides by 2, and that gives us a 4. Okay, the ratio of the length, uh, of the length to the width of a rectangle is Four to three. If the width is nine, so length is the four, width is the three. If the width is nine, find the length and the area of the rectangle. So we set up this ratio as a four over three, length to width. We don't know the length, so we put the width of nine on the bottom. Um, we then cross multiply three times L is three L. 9 times 4 is 36. Divide both sides by 3, and we get L equals 12. And to find area, it's length times width, so 12 times 9, 108. Number 5, solve for the variable AB is proportional to BC. Sorry, the, the ratio of A to B is 5 to 2 find x. So a to b, so that's x plus 5 over b, c, which is 3x, I put that together right here, is equal to 5 over 2. So here we are going to cross multiply 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 5 is 10, 5 times 3x is 15x, minus 2x from both sides, 13x equals 10, then divide both sides by 13. So our answer is this crazy fraction, 10 over 13. Yay! Number six. Number six has a property. Um, we can't quite use side splitter because we're given the base. So we're just going to use the... Um, there are similar by angle, angle. So they have this top angle is congruent to itself, reflexive, and then this angle is congruent to this angle because corresponding angles are congruent. So by angle, angle, we know that these triangles are similar. So we can put it together. I'm going to erase my work. We'll do it like this. Okay, so we go the little triangle is 4 over x, and then the big triangle is 12 over 18. So 4 over x and 12 over 18. So then we're going to cross multiply. We have 4 times 18 is 72 equals 12 x. Divide both sides by 12, and 72 divided by 12 is 6. Okay. 
All right, number seven, find the scale factor of A, B, C, D, 2, W, X, Y, Z. So pick any side on A, B, C, D. I'm going to pick three and then find its matching side on W, X, Y, Z. I'm going to pick six because three and six are matchers. Why not? Three over six is equal to one half. So our scale factor is one half. Now, find the value of S. So anything here, we cut it in half to get to here. So we, this side is 7. So S has to be half of 7, which is 3 and a half. Find the value of T. Well, I know that this side is 3.5, and it is half of T. So I double it, so T is going to be equal to 7. All right, number 10. Decide if the triangles are similar. If yes, which postulate or theorem? Angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side. This is, um, these two triangles have a 45, one angle, and a 90 degree. So we say yes by angle, angle. 11, these two triangles, we have to set up a proportion. So we take our small side over our other small side equal to our bigger side over our other bigger side. And then reduce, and we see we get 4 thirds equal to 4 thirds. So this would be yes by this proportional side, congruent angle, proportional side, side, angle, side. All right, we got a bow tie here. A bow tie makes vertical angles, and we have parallel lines. Parallel lines, we know alternate interior angles are congruent. So we can say that these two triangles are similar by angle, angle, vertical angles and alternate interior angles. Find the geometric mean between uh, 6 and 14. To set that up, you would go um, 6 over x equals x over 14. Cross multiply and you get x squared equals 84. Take the square root of both sides. So we take the square root of 84 and um, simplifying radicals, you find the perfect square that lives inside of 84. And I know that um, 4 goes into 84. So we're going to take the square root of 4 and get 2. And then that leaves us with 21 still left inside because it is not perfect so the answer is 2 root 21 number 14 find the value of x so we are going to use the um, our uh, corollary to 7 3 properties and there was one if you look at x x is on the um, altitude so we're going to use the altitude proportion that says the piece of our hypotenuse over x is equal to x over the other piece of our hypotenuse. Cross multiply, we get x squared equals 12. Take the square root of both sides, 4 is the perfect square. So square root of 4 is 2, 3 is left in the middle, the answer is 2 root 3. Now we have um, to find y, y is the outside leg, so we use that formula um, so we got the outside leg, which is why it goes chills here. We have the piece of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to the outside leg. And then we have the entire hypotenuse, which is not 6 or 2, but it is 6 plus 2, which is 8. Cross multiply, we get x squared equals 16. Square root of 16 is 4. All right, and then that is our chapter seven review in under 10 minutes. How do you like that? Have a great one, guys.